my neighbor came by and asked me if uh, this neighbor, this is the neighbor that parked on my lawn, that's the neighbor that had the fight in the backyard and called the cops. He asked me if I needed any help with my grass. I almost said, do you need any help with your family? Do you need any help keeping your shit together, buddy? Maybe you should stay over at your house. Hi, this is going to be a video for Jay Vega. An apology. Um, I haven't watched many, very, very many Jay Vega videos lately. Because stuff. So I'm going to make up for that by telling Jay Vega, you're wrong, Vega. Mother, father, you are wrong. Shout out to the 300. Cap goes in pocket. No pocket. I'll just put it right there. Jay Vega, there is no such thing as free will. Ugh. As a matter of fact, there's very few illusions that there are free, that there is such a thing as free will. Um, from neuroscience, seeing uh, uh, activities in the brain that are activated before the de decision centers are activated. So you decided to do, move something or do something um, before you decided. Your body was already in motion. Um, to the most fundamental watching someone's life play out and thinking to myself does that person have free will if i tell that person something simple like i believe every choice you have made in your entire life has been surrounding yourself with poor choices and selecting from the best of the poor choices i've heard you literally give examples of what good choices are but you've never considered any of them as a far as a, as a uh, what do you call that a uh, uh, on your action list it's not the word but it's it's close um, I'll tell you what put, put this in my mind oh by the way that person I told that to really picked from the worst of the bad choices until they were in a situation where uh, are the best of the bad choices until there really was only one good bad choice available to them and they chose it as if they had to them they're like that's the best and that's what I've been doing up until now but that actually was the pathway to the next level of poor choices that that took things down a notch and uh, as far as I know that's the last uh, that's really the last I ever saw of them once you like, once you drop off the grid, I can't assume things get much better. Watching your way work your way down below the grid. All right, today went out to the Delta, um, and I look up to uh, how my life has led to having a house right next to the Sandy River Delta, um, very close to my work, and I don't really see a whole lot of uh, a lot of choice in the matter. Uh, today I was cutting through a path that I've cut through like a zillion times. Um, and as we walked into this like head high grass, uh, no thanks at 209 Brown Bag. Nice work. Nice work with the grass. But uh, 209 J. Jones. 209 J. Jones, Brown Bag, Sandra Pina, whoever's not mowing the grass out there. Um, Anyway, I called my dog, and my dog like launches his way ahead of me off into the head high grass. And I said out loud, jokingly, "How are you gonna find me when the grass is like taller than I am?" And he met me perfectly because dogs instinctually know how to triangulate. Um, when they go chasing a rabbit or a cat or a bicycle, they don't run at the bicycle; they run to where they can meet the bicycle. Ah. Uh, yeah, he met me perfectly. And we also met me ex almost exactly in the spot where I put into the river, the only spot, according to the, my experience with rivers, that I could get across with only going shoulder high. Um, I have a dry bag, too. Uh, I also have plastic bags I could wrap my stuff. I could actually, like, I have, like, actually a, 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 a gigantic life vest, one of the best you could buy, um, for, for swimming across deeper rivers. Uh, I could really, I could follow my reasoning on all those decisions, you know, leaving me with that one choice, just like my friend surrounding themselves with poor choices. I had one choice to cross the river. Then I was watching this guy, and the guy's watching me as we cross the bank. He's watching us, and he takes his ball, and this is a thing called obstacle attraction. 
I learned about this in off-road racing. Uh, As you're heading down a, a ravine, a gully, it's like you'd expect a gully. It's pretty terrible. Uh, there's one boulder in the middle of the gully. If you know anything about obstacle attraction and you like watching off-road races, go stand by that boulder. You're going to watch wreck after wreck after wreck. Um, we don't choose to ride around the boulder. We choose to be fascinated by the obstacle. We're attracted to the obstacle. Uh, so this guy's watching Aquila and I, and he throws the ball out at us so his dog could go there. Like He's like, we're having a connected experience, all based on his just noticing me. But dogs believe in trajectory, like we're crossing the stream fast, his ball's swim going at us fast, he needs to come at us fast. Dogs don't rush at strangers fast, unless they're crazy. Uh, so the dog didn't get the ball. I actually waited deeper to get the guy's ball for him. Told him that was a bad cast, and didn't ex and he agreed. And I didn't explain why I thought he made it because I don't believe he had any choice. His attention went one way, and his actions followed. I think that here's the only thing, Jay Vega, that only way that you could exercise anything similar to free will, and that is be aware that you have no real choice. Just like my friends surround themselves with bad choices, try to surround yourself with good choices and then try to select from them and try to give yourself as many good choices as possible. Your history is going to decide exactly which one of those you choose from, but you, you, I believe you do have, based on your programming, a desire for more than one choice. Uh, three actually is a basic model for human decision making. Uh, I've seen that on studies on how people do uh, impulse purchases. Um, companies can provide three products based on their design and their pricing. They know which one you're going to pick. And then people buy, 80% of people buy that one. I think that the only people that buy the cheaper product are people who just have that much money. And the people who buy the expensive product, um, that's really not meant to even be purchased because it has like one extra button on it and it's 40 bucks more. They just want something in their kitchen that people are going to recognize as valuable or that they spent more money on it. Um, and once again, that's based on how they've been programmed. I want people to perceive me as being rich, so I buy a $60 toaster. Mulligan. You know, actually, I do appreciate a certain amount of uh, spontaneity. Um, I like uh, doing the unexpected. I like the whole, well, why not? Because that's, I think, a lot of times that's the closest I get. Actually, that was kind of like having, like, whether or not this is... It's not. It's not free will. But I used to keep uh, my camping gear in my van. And then, like, sometimes after work, just for the fuck of it, I would go. go I'd go camping. But in my mind, there's probably a certain level of uh, bullshit that I could, I could take. Or sometimes I might even decide I've reached it just because I'm like, you know what, I'm calling bullshit on that, I'm going camping. As a safety valve. Hmm. And it's really easy to figure out how I've been programmed to think of camping as the ultimate form of escape and independence and all sorts of things. Anyway, probably long enough. Long enough, Vega. There's no free will. You might say there's no fate but what you make, but you know what? Watch uh, watch those movies. Watch the Terminator movies and think, uh, are these cats in control? No, they're not.